All right, what is going on? We've got a statistics video here. We're going to talk about frequency distributions, histograms, and some related topics. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so a frequency table partitions data into classes or intervals and shows how many data values are in each class. The classes or intervals the classes or intervals are constructed so that each data value falls into exactly one class. Now, as I read through this stuff, you may not know what I'm talking about, but when we get into the examples, I'll explain each of these, you know, by using the example so you'll understand it better. So, how to find the class width for integer data. So, Com compute the largest data value minus the smallest data value divided by the desired number of classes. Okay, that's, that's how we're going to get the class width. You take the largest data value minus the smallest and divide it by however many classes you want. And then once you find this number here, you increase that value to the next higher whole number. Okay, so in other words, if you calculate this and you get 9.2, you would use 10. Okay, you're not rounding. It's not rounding because 9.2 would round down to 9. You go up to the next whole number. Okay, now Let's say that you calculate this and you get 9 as an answer, exactly 9. You would go up to 10. Okay, go up to the next whole number. All right, the lower class limit is the lowest data value that can fit in a class. The upper class limit is the highest data value that can fit in a class. The class width is the difference between the lower class limit of one class and the lower class limit of the next class. Okay, so that right there is important, that last sentence there. And I'm going to really emphasize that in the example so you'll know exactly what I'm talking about there, what I mean there. Because this right here is where so many students make their mistakes and, mi and miss the question because, of, because they, don't, they don't follow this last statement here. Okay, but I will, I'll highlight that in the example. Midpoint. So to find the midpoint, it's the lower class limit. It's the midpoint of the class. So the low, it's the lower class limit plus the upper class limit divided by 2. And then we know that's how you find the midpoint between two numbers. You add the two numbers together and divide by 2. And then to find class boundaries, to find upper class boundaries, add 0.5 unit to the upper class limits. To find lower class boundaries, subtract 0.5 units from the lower class limits. And then we have relative frequency. That's F over N, which is the class frequency divided by the total of all frequencies. All right, so now how to make a frequency table. So determine the number of classes and the corresponding class width. Now, this is for a, this, this statistics video, this is for like a, like a beginner statistics class, an undergraduate level. So the, the, cl the number of classes, I would say 99% of the time, they're going to give you how many classes to use. They'll give you that in the problem. So you're probably not going to really have to worry about that. And then you create the distinct classes, fill in upper class limits, tally the data into classes, compute the midpoint for each class, and determine the class boundaries. And we're going to do all that, and we've got two examples to do, frequency tables. And we're going to do all that. All right, so let's look at this first example. It says a task force to encourage carpooling did a study of one-way commuting distances of workers in the downtown Dallas area. A random sample of 60 of these workers was taken. The commuting distances of the workers in the sample are given in this table here. 
make a frequency table for these data, and let's go ahead and compute the relative frequencies. All right, so let's make a, a frequency table. So for this, they, they did not, in the problem, they didn't give us the number of classes, but I'm going to give it to you. All right, so for this example, we are going to use six classes. And like I said, this right here will normally be given to you, okay? We just kind of, you know, you, you can determine, th there, there are formulas where you can determine how many classes you want that you need to use. Uh, I explained that in another video I have on my, if you want to search my channel for how to create a frequency table or a frequency distribution table, click on that uh, using Excel. Yeah. How to create a frequency distribution table using Excel. Search for that video and at the beginning of that video I, I go over a formula where you can kind of determine how many classes to use. But So check that video out if you want to see that. All right. So we've got six classes. So the, the first thing we, we want to do is we want to determine the class width. So remember, that's the largest data value minus the smallest data value divided by the number of classes you have. So for here, the class width is equal to the largest data value. So Yes, you've got to go through all the numbers and find the largest data value. And for this problem, 47 is the largest. So 47, that's the largest data value minus the smallest. And you can see in here, the smallest one is one. And we're going to divide that by six. And so that comes out to be 7.7. .7. And so we are going to increase to eight. That's going to be our, this is going to be our class width right here. Cause remember it said, go up to the next whole number. So we're going to go up to eight. All right. Now, what do we have to do? All right. So we want to do our class limits, which that's our intervals, okay, our class limits or our, our intervals or lower to upper class limits. And so we are, we are actually now, let's see if I can draw that a little bit straighter. We're actually now going to start doing our table. All right. So we, we need to be able to take in all the data. So Go and look for the smallest number in the table, and that's that's one. We have to be able to take in that number. So our first class, okay, so our first class, the lower limit of our first class is one, and that is going to go to what? Okay, so this is where you have to really be careful. This is what I was emphasizing in this last statement here. The class width is the difference between the lower class limit of one class and the lower class limit of the next class. Okay, so what does that mean? All right, so we establish the lower limit of the first class, and then what we do is we take the class width and add it to one. So eight plus one is nine. That is the lower limit of the next class, okay? Where students mess up is they take the 9 and they put it up here. That's not how it works. You, you take the lower limit of the first class, you establish that, and, and typically you just go, to the, just go to the lowest, the smallest value, and that'll be the lower limit of your first class. Then you add the class width to this lower limit, and that gives you the lower limit of the next class. Okay? And then 
we just take the class width. 9 plus 8 is 17. 17 plus 8 is 25. 25 plus 8 is 33. And 33 plus 8 is 41. So the best thing to do is just go ahead and put all your lower limits for your classes. Okay? Now, you might be asking, well, how did you know to stop right here at 41? Well, let's look at it. If I take 8 plus 41, that would give me 49. But my largest value is what? 47. So I don't need this class right here. I don't need this interval. So I don't need to go anymore. Okay? But, but I will write it down again, and I'll show you why. But look, this is what you do. So this first interval, that's going to go from what? 1 to, well, this is 9, so this is going to go 1 to 8. This is going to go 9 to 16. See, we're just doing one less than the lower limit. And then this is going to go to 24, 32, 40. And now this one, see, the next one, if we took the 8 plus the 41, that would be 49. So that tells us this would be 48. All right. And there's your intervals. Okay. That's your intervals. So now we need to get a frequency column. We're going to do our column for our frequencies. Now. How do we do that? Well, let's look at the first one, 1 to 8. How many numbers fall between 1 and 8? 1 and 8 are included. So you just have to come up here through the data, and you've got to count them. So all the numbers between 1 and 8. So we've got, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So there's 14 numbers between 1 and 8. So this would be 14. And then you would do the same thing for 9 through 16. And I'm not going to go through and do each one of these because I'm sure you don't want to watch me do that. So, But what we would get here is this would be 21. You can come back up here to the chart and go through and count them yourself if you want to to check and make sure you're doing it right. But there's 21 numbers between 9 and 16. And then the next one, that would be 11. And then we would have 6. And then 4. And then 4. And so there you go. That's your frequency. You've got to, you've got to do that. And what I would, what I would recommend doing, you know, mark them out like this, you know, scratch them out. Typically what I do on the test, when I'm given my test, these data values, I usually put them in numerical order for my students because I mean, I mean, I'm not testing to see if you can count how many numbers are between, are between two numbers. Uh, you should be able to do that if you're in this class. But I don't know if a lot of teachers do that. If you if they don't, maybe recommend ask your teacher, hey, could you put the numbers in order to save us a little time on the test? They may or may not. Don't know. All right. So now let's go ahead and find the midpoints. So we're going to find the midpoint of each interval. So the midpoint of the first interval, that's going to be what? That's going to be, how do we do that? Let, let me do that in a different color. I'll go ahead and write, write out my work 1 plus 8 over 2, which is 9 over 2, which that is 4.5. So the part in red is just showing the work. This is really the only answer you need. You could just type all this in your calculator. 9 divided by 2, 4.5. And then for the next one, that would be 9 plus 16 over 2. 
and that would be, let's see, what is that? That's 25 over 2, and so that would be 12.5, okay? So you see what we're doing? We're just adding the lower limit and the upper limit and then dividing by 2, okay? So hopefully you've got that by now. So I'm going to erase this just to keep the, so I can keep the, uh, table looking not so cluttered up so what did we get here we got 4.5 here we got 12.5 here and then we've got 17 plus 24 divided by 2 that's 20.5 and then we've got 25 plus 32 that is 28 point 25 plus 32 divided by 2 is 28.5 and then 33 plus 40 is, divided by 2 is 36.5. And then 41 plus 48 divided by 2, that is 44.5. And so there's your, there's your midpoints. All right. And now we want to do our class boundaries. All right, so basi basically all we're doing here is we're, we're taking the 0.5, see, for the class boundaries. Let's see, where was that at? I know it's in here somewhere. There it is. To how to find the class boundaries. You add 0.5 to the upper class limit and subtract 0.5. That should be from... The lower class limit. All right, so if we subtract 0.5, that's going to be 0.5, and then add 0.5, that's 8.5. Subtract 0.5, that would be 8.5. Add 0.5, that would be 16.5, and so on. So that would be 16.5 to 24.5, 24.5 to 32.5. 32.5 to 40.5, that's a 4, and then 40.5 to 48.5. There's your class boundaries. And so there's your, there's your frequency table. That's make a frequency table for these data. That's what we did. There it is. It's not that difficult to do. You just got to remember. But like I said, the, the thing that students miss the most is when they add the class width, okay? They add the class width, one plus eight, one plus the class width, so one plus eight is nine. That is the lower limit of the next class, okay? And then you just keep adding eight until you get to the last one. All right, so now we want to do the relative, relative, frequency okay <clears throat> so how do we find the relative frequency well what does it say to do it says F over N so that's the frequency of that particular class divided by the total the sum of all the frequencies. All right. So the frequency of this class is 14. So that's going to be 14 over the sum of these frequencies. So let's add this up and, and, and let's see if we notice something when we add these up. So if we add up the 14 plus the 21 plus 11 plus 6 plus 4 plus 4, we get 60 as an answer, okay? Now, let, let's look at this. this. This might come in handy earlier in the problem. So we have a random sample of 60. So they tell us that there's 60 numbers. So look at this. When you're going through and counting the numbers for each for each class, when you're going through and counting the numbers, see like we did here, we got 
14 here, 21 here, and so on. You can check real quick to see if these numbers are correct. All you got to do is add them up, and it should equal whatever that is. Right? It should add up to however many numbers you have. And if they don't tell you how many numbers there are, well, just look. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's 10 columns. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 rows. 6 times 10 is 60. So you know that all of these frequencies, when you add them up, it should equal 60. If it doesn't, then you counted wrong. You missed a number somewhere. All right? And so the frequent class frequency here is 14 over 60, which is 0.23. And typically what we do is, we, you know, just put it as a decimal. Round it to, I, I usually tell my class to round it to, you know, three decimal places. Two decimal places is fine. You know, I probably wouldn't count off for that on a test, but, but there it is. Okay, so you just, it's the frequency of that class divided by the sum of all the frequencies. So for the next one, that would be 21 over 60, which that is 0.35. And then this would be 11 over 60, which would be 0.18. And then this would be 6 over 60, which is 0.1. And then this would be 4 over 60 which is 0 0.07 and 4 over 60 which equals 0 0.07 so that's how you get your relative frequencies and you know like I said I, I went ahead and wrote this down in the table but typically I just put in 14 divided by 60 in the calculator and just write this number down in that column so in the end my column you know, not writing all that down. I just write it down when I'm teaching this so the students can see. That's how it would look if I was just doing it. Okay. All right, so there it is. That's ex that's example one. Okay. All right, let's take a look at another. Oh, I left myself a bunch of space to work it out. <clears throat> All right, so let's look at this. It says an irate customer called Dollar Daily Mail Order Company 40 times during the last two weeks to see why his order had not arrived. So he must have been pretty mad. Each time he called, he recorded the length of time in minutes. He was put on hold before being allowed to talk to a customer service representative. See the table. So these are the times he had to wait right here. Okay. What are the smallest, what are the largest and smallest values in the table? If we want five classes in a frequency table, what should the class width be? And then create a frequency table and compute the relative, relative class frequency. So we want the relative frequency also. So basically, these parts A and B right here, we're doing what we did in the first example. And then they want us to draw a histogram and a relative frequency histogram. All right, so let's let's do that. So first thing, let's let's do exactly like we did on this problem. We need the class width, and then we need to set up our table. And they they tell us how many classes to use. All right. So let's let's go with the class width. That's the largest value minus the smallest. So we got to find those anyway. So the largest value is 13, and the smallest is 1. And how many classes do we have? Uh, I think it told, oh, we want five classes. And so we're going to divide that by 5, and that is equal to 2.4. So we will use three Whoop. so we will use a class width 
of 3 because we go up to the next integer. All right. So we've got our class limits. All right. And we want to start with the lowest, the, the smallest number, which is 1. And we're going to do 1 plus 3 is 4. And remember, that's the lower limit of the next class. It does not go up here. And then 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 plus 3 is 10. And we need to keep going. Let's see. 10 plus 3 is 13. And 13 plus 3 is 16. We're not going to need the last one, are we? See that? We won't need the last one. Because the largest number is 13. But I'm going to leave it there anyway. I'll erase it in a minute. So this is going to go from 1 to 3, 4 to 6, 7 to 9, 10 to 12, 13 to 15. And then we don't need that one. So that's the class limits. And then I'm going to do my frequency. So I need to go through and count and see how many numbers are in each interval. So let's just do the 1 to 3. So I've got 1, mm, let's see, 2, 3. So there's three numbers in the first interval. And I'll tell you what, we'll just go ahead and do the 4 to 6 also. 1, 2, 3, 4... 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, looks like 15, okay, and you would just go through and do all that, I would suggest marking them out, it'll be easier to do the rest of them, but that would be 15, 17, 4, and 1, and remember, a good way to check how many numbers are there I mean it did tell us in the problem the 40 times but remember we can count the columns count the rows multiply them together that'll tell us how many numbers and if we take these 3 plus 15 plus 17 plus 4 plus 1 that equals 40 and we'll go ahead and write that down n equals 40 because we'll need that for our relative frequencies that's the sum of the frequencies. So we got n equals 40. That matches uh, how many numbers we have. So more than likely we counted them right. Yes you, yes, you could have the numbers matched and have these numbers wrong. This sum could equal how many you have and this could be wrong. Because I mean you could count one too many here and one less here. So there is that possibility. Okay. All right, so now let's do the midpoint. All right, so the midpoint, well, that's 1 plus 3 is 4. Let me write it down here. 1 plus 3 divided by 2, so that's 4 over 2, which equals 2. So that's the midpoint there. And now for the next one, that's going to be 4 plus 6 over 2, which is 10 over 2, which equals 5. Okay. And then 7 plus 9 is 16. 16 divided by 2 is 8. 10 plus 12 is 22. 22 divided by 2 is 11. And 13 plus 15, that is 28. 28 divided by 2 is 14. So there's your midpoints. And now we want to go ahead and do our class boundaries. So... class boundaries all right so remember we're going to subtract a half to the lower limit add a half to the upper limit now that half that we're adding and subtracting let's let's talk about that for just a second okay so why am I subtracting a half and adding a half 
Well, do you see the gap between the the three and the four, the six and the seven, the nine and the ten, the twelve and the thirteen? The gap between each one is one, right? So what's half of one? Point five. Whatever the the gap is between this upper limit and this lower limit, this upper limit and this lower limit, the upper limit, lower limit, upper limit, lower limit. Whatever that gap is, you half it, and that's what you're going to add and subtract to these. Because, you know, sometimes you may have decimals here, okay? But that's how you would, that's how you would do it. So this is going to be 0.5 to 3.5, subtract a half, add a half. Subtract a half, add a half. And then we just continue that on down. And then 12.5 to 15.5. And so there's our class boundaries. All right. Now we need our relative frequency. All right. So that's going to be 2 divided by 40. Right. 2 divided by 40 for our relative frequency and that no I'm sorry not two I was looking at the midpoint three divided by 40 three I'm just doing the work out here okay just so you can see it so three divided by 40 that's going to be 0 0.075 and then 15 divided by 40 is 0.375 and then 17 divided by 40 I'm going to erase all these when I get done but 17 divided by 40 that is 0.425 and then 4 divided by 40 is 0.1 and then 1 divided by 40 that is 0 0.025 so there's your relative frequency I just took I took the frequency divided by the sum of the frequencies, the frequency for each class. All right. All right, so we've got we've got our frequency table drawn up and we've got our relative frequencies listed. All right. Now they want us to draw a histogram. So let's let's do that. Let's draw our histogram here. And let's do, let's do this. Uh, yeah, we can just. All right, so we're going to go here at 0.5. And then we've got, now I'm, I'm going to explain all this in a minute. 3.5, 6.5. Nine point five, twelve point five, and fifteen point five. All right. So to draw the histogram, here's where the class boundaries come in. So just just real quick, look at this real quick. If if we did something like this, all right. This is not how you draw the histogram. I'm just trying to make a point here. One to three, four to six, seven. Well, I tell you what, let me do this later after we draw the, let, let's go ahead and draw the histogram first. All right, and then I'll explain why we're using this versus this, okay? Let, 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 me, let, me do the, let me do it the right way first and then I'll go and do it how you're not supposed to to show you the difference. All right, so, so these are your we, we mark off the numbers from our class boundary. See the 1.5 to 3.5, 3.5 to 6.5, and so on. See, we, we, we've got all those here. 1.5 to 3.5, 3.5 to 6.5. So you're, that's what you're using your class boundaries for. Now, the frequencies tell us how tall our bar needs to be. 
So we can see the smallest bar is 1, the largest bar is 17. So, I mean, probably what I would do here is, I don't know, maybe go up in, uh, you could go up in increments of 2, you could go in, up in increments of 3. Uh, if we went up in increments of 2, we would have to go up, we would have to have about 9 marks here. Let's see how that works. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that would be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. All right. So, you know, I mean, I, you could label them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But, I mean, you would have 17 marks there. You could go up in threes, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, okay? I don't know. Your teacher may tell you how to, what, what to do, may not. It, they may leave it up to you. But, you know, just, just go where you don't have to put so many marks. This isn't too bad here. All right. So look at this. For the class boundary, 0.5 to 3.5, the frequency is 3. So that tells us that for this, the class boundaries here, that bar is going up to 3. You see that? And then for the next one, 3.5 to 6.5, 3.5 to 6.5, we're at 15. And so that means this one's going to go all the way up to between the 14 and the 16. And yes, I know mine doesn't look that good, but the next one is going to go up to 17. And so we're going to be up here too. I'm sure the bars I'm drawing are kind of slanted. And then let's see, 9.5 to 12.5, 9.5 to 12.5, that's at 4. So that's going to be about right here. And then for the last one, 12.5 to 15.5, that's going to be at 1, a height of 1. And so there's your histogram. All right. So the thing you need to remember on a histogram, these bars here that are going up, they touch. They need to touch. So let me go over here. Remember when I was starting to do it wrong? This is not how you do it. 1 to 3. And then we got what, four to six, and then seven to nine, and so on. Okay. And see, this one went up to three, and then this one went on up to like 15, and this one went on up to 17. That's not a histogram. You see that gap in between them? That's not that's not what you want. That's like a bar graph. Okay. A histogram they touch so what we do is we do these class boundaries that it it fills in that gap it, it puts these bars together here see that's what that's what we're doing here see we're going from 0.5 to 3.5 3.5 to 6.5 so it's going to make them touch so so these numbers down here you get from your class boundaries so you don't use the class limits to draw a histogram. Okay. All right. So that's your histogram. Now they also wanted us to do a relative frequency histogram. A relative frequency histogram. So look, it's going to be done the same way. So let's, let's draw this. So we're going to have the 0.5 to 3.5 to 6.5, 9.5, 12.5, and 15.5. All right. Now, we're going to draw the bars just like we did here. But on the histogram, to determine the height of the bar, we use what? We use the frequencies. To determine the height of a relative frequency histogram, we're going to use the relative frequencies here. So it's not, it's not really that difficult to do. 
it's the most difficult part will probably be labeling. Let's see, one, two, three, four. So, you know, the highest we have to go is 0. 0.425. And so maybe I'll put a, another one right here. So I would label this 0. 0.1, 0. 0.2, 0. 0.3, 0. 0.4, 0. 0.5. And so for this one, that's going to be 0. 0.075. So that's below the 0. 0.1. So that's going to go almost up there, but not quite. And then for the 3.5 to 6.5, that's going to go to 0. 0.375. So that's going to go almost up to 0.4. And then for the next one, that's 0.425. So that's going to go a little bit above 0.4. And then for the next one, 9.5 to 12.5, that's at 0.1. That's going to be right there. And then for the 15.5, that's going to be at 0.025. So that's going to be about down in here somewhere. So you can see that it has the same shape as the histogram. It's just going to be like you kind of squish it down a little bit. It's not. It's going to be like where it's not standing as high. You know, I mean, depending on how far apart you make these marks. But you know, if you if you put them side by side, you know. You got to understand right here is 0. 0.5. So 0. 0.5 on, on this graph over here would be way down here. So you can see it's just kind of squished down, but it still should have the same shape on it. Okay. All right. So what do we got next? Distribution shapes. Okay. So what are, what are all the different shapes we can have? Well, you got mound shaped. Uniform or rectangular, skewed left, skewed right, or bimodal. So just a quick, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to put a lot of time in drawing these, but you would have something like this. That would be your mound shape, mound shape. All right. Now, I mean, is it going to be perfectly symmetrical like that? Well, probably not, but it'll be close. Okay. So that's your, uh, that's your mound shaped. All right. Now a uniform that that's where you're going to have your blocks. They're pretty much going to be, it's pretty much going to go straight across. Okay, now it may not perfect go perfectly straight across. You may have one just a little bit higher, but not much. But that's your uniform shape. This is uh, uniform. And then we got skewed left, skewed right. Oh, I'm going to have to come up here and do it. All right, so skewed left and skewed right. So let's look at this. Skewed left, that would look something like this and then you know you might have a smaller one right here but this right here would be skewed left and then for skewed right you may have something like this well, let me draw that a little better something like this. This would be skewed right. And yeah, I, I know it kind of looks like they would be called the opposite, wouldn't it? It seems like the big part being over here would be skewed right. The big part over here would be skewed left, but it's not. So if that's what you're thinking, just remember it's the opposite of what you're thinking. So it's the, it's the lower part right here, skewed left, the lower part over here, skewed right. And then we have bimodal. So what bimodal would look like would be you, you would have something like uh, like this. Uh, let's see, maybe here, here, and then here, here, here. This would be bimodal. So you've got you've got two 
like two peaks. Okay, that would that's what bimodal would look like. Okay. All right, so we got some more definitions here, and we've got one last example. So outlier outliers in a data set are the data values that are very different from other measurements in the data set. So, so what that means is, let, let's just go up here, back to this example up here, and I'll kind of show you what a, explain to you what an outlier is. Let me see if I can erase all these marks. So, so you have all this data here, and you can see we're going from one to 13. And, you know, looking at how this is filled in, you can see we, we kind of have, you know, a good range of numbers between 1 and 13 or 1 and 15, whatever. But let's say that, let's say that this number here, instead of that being a 9, let's say that was, say, 20. Do you see how this number here, it just kind of looks like it doesn't belong to anything because it, it's just so far away from everything? This would be an outlier. That's what they mean there. Okay. All right. Let's see. All right. So the cumulative frequency for a class is the sum of the frequencies for that class in all previous classes. So how to make an OJOB? Make a frequency table showing class boundaries and cumulative frequencies. For each class, make a dot over the upper class boundary at the height of the cumulative class. We're going to do an example, don't worry of the cumulative class frequency. The coordinate of the dots are upper class boundary cumulative class frequency. So all this is, is remember in algebra you learned how to plot a point x, y, x coordinate, y coordinate. This is like your x coordinate, the upper class boundary, and this is like your y coordinate, the cumulative class frequency. And then connect the dots with line segments. By convention, an ojive begins on the horizontal axis at the lower class boundary of the first class. Okay, so I hope all of that made sense to you, but we are going to work an example. Okay, draw an ojive using the data in the previous example. So, basically what we're going to do is we're going to use this data. So you would need to do this, and basically what you're going to do, cumulative frequency. You're going to add that one more column. Okay? So let me, I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to copy this down and paste it down there by the, by the example. And yes, I'm going to pause the video because I don't know how many attempts it's going to take me to paste this thing. All right, did it on the first try. How about that? <clears throat> All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to we need to calculate our cumulative frequencies. So what does it say to do? The cumulative frequency for a class is the sum of the frequencies for that class in all previous classes. Okay, so here we go. So the frequency for the first class is 3. And then for the second one, it's the frequency of that class plus the previous ones. So 15 plus 3 is 18. The cumulative frequency for this is the frequency for that. See, we're on the third class now. So it's the frequency of that class plus all the previous. So that's going to be 17 plus 15 plus 3 is 35. And then for this one, it's going to be 4 plus all of these. So that's going to be 39. And for this one, it's going to be this one plus all the previous ones. 
and that's going to be 40. <clears throat> okay, and it's it should add up to whatever that is, right? All right, so let's draw our ojive. <clears throat> now, let's see. Make a frequent, okay, there we go. All right, so for each class, make a dot over the upper class boundary at the height of the cumulative class frequency. The coordinate of the dots are the upper class boundary and the cumulative class frequency. Connect these dots with line segments. But let's go down here to three real quick. By convention, an ojive begins on the horizontal axis at the lower class boundary of the first class. So the lower class boundary of the first class is 0.5. Is 0.5. So we'll put that right here. Okay. And that is where it begins. Okay. Just get that out of the way. And now what we want to do is we want to plot all of the upper class boundaries on the number line. So that is going to be 3.5, and 15.5. Okay. So I just, all these numbers here, that's what, that's what I listed there. But remember, we had to put the lower limit of the first class, the lower limit, the lower class boundary of the first class here, because this right here, it says that's you, that's where it starts. And so now basically all it is, is we're plotting points. So we've got the point 3.5, 3, 6.5, 18, 9.5, 35, 12.5, 39, and 15.540. That's the point you're plotting. This is like your X. This is like your Y. This is like your X, Y, X, Y, X, Y, X, Y. Okay. All right. So we've got to go up to 40. So I think the best thing to do here would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So that would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. All right, so for 3.5, 3.5, 3. So that's going to be about right in there. And then we've got 6.5, 18, 6.5, 18. That is about right in there. And then we've got 9.5, 35. 9.535 and then 12.539 that's going to be 12.539 and then 15.540 that'll be a little bit whoop, a little bit above that one and so then it says what connect it with line segments and there's your ojive right there I think yeah that's the last example but I do want to show you one other thing okay so let's suppose let's suppose we have let's suppose we start at you see how this one started at 0 0.5? Let, let, let's say it started at, say, the the first one was, say, 10.5, and then this one went to maybe, I don't know, 12.5, uh, 14.5, 16.5, and so on. Okay? Let's just say. This has nothing to do with the previous example. I'm just showing you something real quick. It, it has to do with the scale. 
I mean, if this is two units, this is not 10 units, okay? So what do you do if, if, you ha if you're drawing something and this distance here, and a lot of the times this distance here may not be to scale. So what we do there is we, uh, we put this little break in there like that. And what it means is this line here is broken, okay? Uh, it, it's telling us that it's, it's not to scale. Uh, so, you know, just be aware of that. I mean, if you wanted to, I mean, I guess you, I, I guess you could have, you know, I guess you could have put one there showing us not to scale, you know, that that's not 0.5. Okay, but that's what that's what this means when you see it. That means this distance from here to here is not the true. It's not to scale with everything else. Okay. All right. So that was quite a bit of stuff. Uh, I hope you learned something. Uh, I'll be doing more of these statistics videos. Uh, so I hope it helped. Check out my other videos. Give me a like, share, subscribe, comment. Thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Later.